What up, Internet? Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday to everybody out there on the Internet. How you doing? Good to see you. Thanks for coming out. This is the live show. This is the live show, and if anybody was wondering what the live show is, it's me yammering on for a couple of hours, talking to you guys, answering questions, and doing things along those lines. And trying not to say along those lines. I <laughs> um, don't know why the camera is set too weird. There we go. Let's get closer. <laughs> it's sort of uh, it, this is sort of a show of me talking to a picture of me whilst talking to you guys while you chat in the chat area. We do have some uh, video portion, which normally comes in about an hour into the show. So uh, that's what's going on. That's what we're up to. We're going to say hi to some people here real quick. And then we're going to move on. All right. Who was first to the chat today? Mr. Dan Squires. <laughs> Mr. Dan Squires, first to the chat, quickly followed by Mellow Moogle. And I forget who was the third. I'm very sorry. I forget who is the third, and as you guys know, when I have to pop open the chat here, it takes away it takes away the old chat <laughs> from the beginning of the show, and I hit the pop out before I, you know, did anything like write it down. But I know it was Dan was first and Mellow Moogle, and I don't know who was second or who was third, but thank you guys for showing up super quick. Super quick, right out the gate, as soon as I... As soon as I upload the event, those guys show up early for the early chat. Let's say what's up to a couple of the people I see here in the chat. I see Guppy Guru hanging in the chat. What's up? I see Heather from Varuna Aquatics. What's up? I see Magic Mom 21. I see the Aquarium Co-op. What's up, Corey? How you doing? I see Laura Klinger saying, hey, everyone, we'll be lurking while I nurse my puppers. Hashtag... Lurkers Unite, hashtag Bob Barker, hashtag He Hates Me Now, hashtag Vets, what is that, Vets Suck, he says? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, I like Vets, I just don't like the vet bill. And I like Bob Barker, but I guess you gotta spay and neuter your pets, that was his thing, that was his thing that he always said at the end of his show. I say don't shoot off fireworks in the middle of the night, so it's a little different, but... He also had that long spindly uh, microphone, you know, that weird super long micro. I don't even know what that was about. I don't understand why he had a uh, a long microphone. I don't. I'm still to this day. I have no idea what that was all about. Uh, but Tim Lewis is here. The D Thomas CG. How you doing? Good to see you. Um, there's uh, there was some early chat asking people. People were asking questions about stuff. Um. Something about garlic food. Ooh, I like garlic food, and I as I think a lot of you guys know, I feed a lot of garlic food to my uh, my fish. They love it, and uh, I love uh, giving them some garlic. You know, helps keep them uh, helps keep them fresh and clean. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Tim Lewis is here. Good to see you, Tim. Kevin Keener, what's up, my man? We gotta hang out soon, Kevin. You gotta drive that bus down here. Drive that bus down here, and we gotta hang out, Mr. Kevin. Come on down. See how I, I tied in the Bob Barker there. See what happened? I like to point out things along those lines. 
along those lines. Ah, oh, I did it. Somebody opened the back door, but don't worry. Vicky Toria is here on the lookout, so she's home, working from home today, which is cool. Well, half of the day. She was gone all, all morning while I was running around spazzing out. Uh, Charlie List is here. Good to see you. Uh, Leon Bal... Leone. Leone Ballantine. What's up? Savannah the Aqua Llama coming all the way up from Oregon. Good to see you. And uh, always good to uh, say hi to everybody. Oh my gosh, you guys. Today is Pi Day. Oh, I had completely forgotten. We got a super chat here from the Aquarium Co-op reminding us that it is Pi Day. I had totally <laughs> forgotten. It's 3.14... Uh, Pi Day, oh my gosh, I'd completely forgotten that it was Pi Day. Oh, man. And if you guys know, uh, we just got a super chat from Barbara Jackson for the two ninety nine. dollars As you guys know, Barbara Jackson is our Pi supporter on the Patreon. Uh, she busted out to four places of Pi. She is our Pi supporter, and um, but she has a super chat here that says, A pisto fry, female, is chasing the male. Move him. Uh, with the pistos, yeah, I would say uh, once you have fry, it's a good idea just to move the male for a little while. Um, or is the, sorry, the female is chasing the male. Yeah, I probably would. Uh, I probably would just segregate them uh, for a little while. And uh, if you, I guess if you only have one pair in there, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. But uh, they're super hard to catch, I'll tell you that. I've got a, I've got a female I'm trying to catch. Uh, Pisto Grama Cacatoides I'm trying to catch. And uh, I can't catch them. I can't catch her to save my life. But it'll happen. It's just a matter of time. Matter of persistence, matter of persistence and time. But if that's ever happening, it's if, if that's ever happening with any breeding, uh, any breeding fish, I would always recommend it. I was always, always recommend uh, separating the male or the female, depending on which breed you got. Um, you can almost always just separate <laughs> both. If you just have one pair in there, you can actually just take the parents out once the fry are kind of free swimming. Um, you just have to do that quite a bit with the uh, the betas, you know, once the, uh, you know, as you guys know, the male takes care of the babies. But after a few days, uh, the male will start to get a little bit cranky if there's too many babies. Um, and he'll start to eat some of them because they're too hard to maintain, uh, keeping them corralled. Because, of course, they're fish and they want to go swim around and do stuff. Um, so... With the betas, when I used to breed betas all the time, I would leave the male in there uh, for eh, maybe three days. Maybe three days, maybe four days, just depending. Once they started free swimming and moving around, then I would pull the male out too, and I would just let all the babies do the baby stuff in there. Um, so I would definitely bust them out and... Uh, and uh, uh, let the babies just do their thing. Mac, Roy, Roy, D's. Is that right? Well, that's not right. Uh, let's see. So the um, Freshman Aquatics is asking, what is my favorite Apisto? Uh, I would say that my favorite, favorite, favorite Apisto is probably the Mac, Mac Masteri is probably my favorite, I think. Um, but I do like the Cockatoides and uh, what's the other breed I'm thinking of? Um, I got, uh, how do you say that? Agagazizi? Agagazizi? Aga is that right? Agagazizi. What's that? What's that word I'm thinking of? Aga. Yeah, it's Agazizi, I think. Yeah, I like them too. Um, but I would say that uh, I kind of like them all, actually. I mean, as far as, like, you know, them being... Um, they're pretty much... They're pretty much my favorite 
cichlid, honestly. I think they would, any of the apistos would fall into being my favorite cichlid, I guess. Um, be, just mainly because they're kind of just, um, they have those character. not only do they have some cool color characteristics, but they have a personality characteristic that I like that's not just so crazy gung-ho like a lot of the big, um, a lot of the big, uh, cichlids and stuff. Um, and they won't tear up plants and stuff, which is very important in my world, um, to not tear up plants and that kind of stuff. Oh my gosh, I see Aquapros is in the chat and he says, feed me, feed me, Seymour. Um, no, no, I can't feed you today, bro. I'm kind of busy, but there is an open invitation to come up for my birthday if you want. When's my birthday? I don't know. You'll have to call me. Uh, and uh, But I think there also is an open invitation for um, uh, Corey, but I know that he'll be fl like flying. I think he'll have just landed on a, in an airplane or something, so it's probably not going to work out. But maybe I'll get Jimmy and uh, the bearded fish keeper and some other people down here. It might be fun. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, guys. I, I've been... Uh, I've been gluing and crazing a lot of uh, plastics lately, and I think it's—I <laughs> think I should start wearing my gas mask. It's making me cough. Um, let's see here. Carson Anderson is here. What is up, my man? Hashtag fish fam. Hashtag shenanigans. Hashtag Joel Shrimpsies. Shrimp, shrimp prizes. There we go. What's up, Carson? Good to see you. I haven't seen you around in a little while, uh, which I know why, but uh, hopefully... Uh, everything's getting back to normal for you, my man, and uh, everything is good. We've got some super chats here. Uh-oh, we got a super chat from the Coop, who says he wants to beat this super chat. Let's see how high we can get. Okay. Then Lisa Jobes with the 777 seven, seven super chat here on Pi Day, topping the Coop. And then Daryl Dimer, copying... Or uh, topping Lisa Jobes with the ten dollar. Thank you very much, Daryl Dimer, my man. And uh, it looks like it looks like uh, <laughs> a bunch of people super chatting now. All right, it's gonna be hard to it's gonna be hard to keep up uh, with all these super chats, you guys. But luckily, it's a two hour show, three times a week. So I think we'll have time to address any of the questions or things that may have come up. We definitely have time to uh, rock and roll on that. Ashley Taylor with the five pound super chat saying every every day is pie day in England. Pork pie starter, meat and potato, pie for mains, that's entree to you, and apple for dessert. All needed food groups. I like that. I like that. That sounds like a solid way to uh, get rocking and rolling through your day. Honestly, if you could have pie with every meal, it wouldn't be that bad, but I would be missing out on the udon noodle. <laughs> Is the udon noodle? Is it a question? We don't know. Uh, we don't know if it's a question. We don't know if it's an answer. We don't know anything. What do we know? We know we like pie, right? Right. Uh, we have the zombie drummer with a 2345 <laughs> super chat. Because <laughs> the koopy... The coupe. Oh, sorry. The coupe is throwing down the gauntlet. Uh, Zombie Drummer is a big time supporter of ours. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it, my man. Um, and uh, he's always here uh, and uh, always supporting the show and stuff like that. And uh, much, much appreciate it. Much appreciate it. Uh, Caroline Epler with the twenty four ninety nine super chat saying yummy garlic fish food. Uh, yes, I, I love feeding garlic fish food. As you guys know, um, I always get this wrong. Is it new, is it new life spectrum or is it new line spectrum? <laughs> I almost always speed feed NLS for, for my, uh, my fish. And then, uh, I've currently switched over from the Shirakura for my shrimp to the shrimp king shrimp food. The complete version. Uh, I tried all of them. I tried all five of them, which actually came from uh, 
Mr. Steven Scogland, who uh, sent some of that over to me, sent some uh, some samples, and then he sent me a big bottle of it, which has been awesome. Uh, I've been utilizing that, using, utilizing the complete. Uh, I tried some of the other foods that they had, and um, I uh, was definitely enjoyable, uh, but the complete one seems to be the best so far. Uh, but the new life, uh, new life spectrum, or is it new line spectrum? God, do I always get that wrong? I don't know why. New life from yes, new life spectrum, new life spectrum. Uh, and let me see if I can't find it here. Okay, there's that. And then let me see. Let me check something here real quick. Why don't I? Although another food that I could definitely, uh, an another type of food that I could definitely recommend uh, would be to, what's the word? Um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, would be rapashi. Um, if that was, if you can't get New Life Spectrum, Rapashi would be the other one that I pretty typically, um, would, um, does that work? No, this doesn't work. Is this broken? Paste. Generate. Oh, wait, how does this work? Oh, I got a... Sorry, guys. I'm pushing buttons because I want to try and get you guys this link. Uh, copy. Copy. And it's going to happen. Oh, my gosh. It's going to happen here. Oh, yes. Here we go. I got it. Okay. Oh, there we go. It takes a minute to get around the uh, Skynet here. Skynet says you're not supposed to... You're not supposed to, like put links into chat but there you go it takes me a minute to get around it <laughs> didn't have that one on the ready but that's the garlic food that i feed um there's an affiliate link right there that will take you to um the aquarium coop is where that will take you to and you can look at all the types that they have there and that'll give you a good idea of uh that that's the fish food i, I regularly use is the new life spectrum um although in the past, I've had a lot, a lot, a lot of success with rapashi foods. Rapashi food would be um, one that definitely I would recommend on a regular basis to people. And uh, it's run by a guy who's super awesome. He was super nice when I met him so and knowledgeable and all that kind of stuff. So respect to both those guys. Uh, Tim Lewis with the $25 Super Chat breaking the Super Chat window here. Saying, go, go, go. Well, thank you very much, Tim. Tim is always a big-time supporter. He's on the Patreon. He is uh, one of the big-time supporters of this channel and always consistently here. And uh, I can't say thank you very thank you enough, Tim. Tim is just also another one of those guys who's just uh, always been supportive and always contributing and always here and bringing you know, good smiles and laughs and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Just super awesome. Um, raised fish room is asking Hydro, Do you know anything about calamus worms? If I take all the fish out of the tank for a week or two, will the worms die out or do I need to bleach the whole tank and equipment? Uh, you need to treat the whole tank. Uh, you need to treat everybody in there. Um, because they're only, you can only treat for the calamus worms when they're basically, I guess the easy way to explain it would be like they're it's it's only treatable when they're sort of in their free moving uh form. It's kind of the nicest way to put it, really, realistically. Um so just keep treating for them. I wouldn't take the fish out. I'd just keep treating the whole tank for calamus worms. Um so yeah, don't bother with taking them out or bleaching any of that stuff. Just keep treating uh, just keep medicating, and it's going to take a long time. So bear that in mind. I think last time, which is, by the way, it was a long time ago that I really had to deal with it. Um, 
I think it was like 60 days or something like that. So it was basically like two months of treating and just keeping up on it and just making sure uh, that every time it kind of like flared up or whatever, uh, it gets knocked back and knocked back and knocked back until eventually you just get rid of uh, the whole infestation. It's like rats. You know what I mean? It's like having rats. You got to just stay on it. You can't just you can't just go lax. You can't burn the building down. Uh, cause you probably have to do something in there later, you know, like have a roof or whatever. You just got to keep on it and keep going. Uh, the aquarium coupe, the coupe with the 2555 chat, <laughs> super chat. <laughs> it's just piling up. <laughs> it's Kevin Keener with the $100 super chat. It's bright red. You guys, it's bright red. It'll probably be there the whole show. I don't know how long they last. Um, but Chansky85, not to be outshone with a $2 super chat. Thank you very much, Chansky. And uh, Kevin, the coupe, Tim Lewis, uh, Caroline Epler, and Zombie Drummer, Ashley Taylor, everybody, Daryl Dimer. Uh, Lisa Jobes is always hanging around, lurking, and always uh, contributing. Definitely big time thank you uh, to all you guys. And Guppy Guru with the 99 cent tip. <laughs> Thanks, my man. I, I appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I appreciate all the super chats, you guys. It's it's, it's huge, and it all goes back into making more shows. Showing up here, uh, KG Cichlids with the ninety nine tip jar. Thank you very much. Um, the <laughs> Lumpy Dog says the Cory Bot is in the chat room. You got to watch out. The Cory Bot comes around sometimes and throws tips in the tip jar. You got to watch out. Uh, Mateo, my boy from Chihuahua. <laughs> it says New Life Spectrum. Yeah, I uh, I got the link there. And for some reason, I always say New Line Spectrum, and I don't. It's like I, I don't know. It's something wrong with my brain. I think it's just New Line. Just New Line smell sounds so much more snappier than New Life. You know, New Life Spectrum almost sounds like some kind of weird church or something. I don't know. I, which is on my mind because there was a strange person that came to my door today to tell me about um, I was invited to a uh, I was being cordially invited to a what was it? Uh, how did they put it a memorial a memorial and I went oh my gosh who did somebody in the neighborhood pass away or something like that and uh, turned out it was the memorial for Jesus Christ and I was like oh well um, sorry, I said I'm, I'm of a different religion, so no thank you, and have, have a nice day. She seemed like a very nice lady, but I was initially, initially they got me. Initially they got me with their sales pitch because I, I had thought somebody had passed away. Like maybe the neighbor had died or something, and I was like, oh no, who, what, what happened? You know, I was like, oh, well, if that's old news. <laughs> So I don't think I'm going to show up uh, to that memorial service. Um, Eric Adams. I love your avatar, man. The little puppy dog. That's perfect. I love that. Eric Adams with a $9.99 super chat saying, not going to beat $100, but I'll pile this on. Thanks, Joel. Keep it up. Hey, thank you, Eric. I, You know, it's hard to not... Uh, to, it, it's hard it's hard to say like thank you over and over again and not sound trite you know or or whatnot but uh, I definitely it it's it's profoundly appreciated um, I did post a thing up on Facebook today um, just I, I reposted something from three years ago so um, today I have uh, I've been sober for. So yesterday was 1,400 days sober. Today's 1,401. And uh, I posted a thing up onto Facebook. Um, I was just sharing. Uh, so when I got sober for the first year, uh, I would write uh, a post onto Facebook every single day. Uh, I basically did a thing where I posted onto Facebook every single day. So every single day that I got sober... You know, it started out with day one, and it was not on purpose. I didn't, I didn't begin the idea of it um, on purpose. It just happened to be that day one, instead of making 
you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of phone calls or whatever, uh, I basically went on to uh, Facebook and I just, I wrote out this big thing and I just said, here's what's going on. Here's my, what's up with my life. I'm a mess. Uh, you know, I'm a, I admitted that I'm an alcoholic and an addict and I have problems and I'm going to blah, 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 and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and da, 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 da. And so I, it just was like sort of a declaration that I was like, look, there is no going back for me personally at the time from having put that post out there. You know what I mean? So it really, it really made me feel accountable, um, it made me feel accountable to the situation at the time um, because I could have easily just like gone with the like anonymous route and not talk about that kind of stuff or have expressed it to anybody uh, or like waited a long time before I brought it up or any of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, you know, uh, being the type of person that I am, I'd like to confront and run a problem uh, at whatever time that I can, right, in the opportunities that I can. Um, so it felt right at the time to just go like, this is it. Like, that's how I'm going to go about doing this, you know, and a lot of people told me like, don't do that. That's not going to work. That's not a good idea. Don't tell everybody, um, you know, you're your employer might fire you, your, uh, future, just think about your future jobs, you know, and, um, eventually, you know, like way down the road here, I have answers to all of those things that people said to me at the time that like, that's not the way to do it because you could be threatening, you know, future jobs. Right. And, um, you know, and you know, nowadays my response would be like, if, Somebody was going to hire me and they, they wanted to, you know, they were going to hire me for a job. And I said, hey, I'm a, I'm a recovering alcoholic. I'm sober. I've been sober for, you know, however, like, uh, so three years and 10 months or whatever, right? So, because it's not that far off till I hit four years, but. I don't count the days that don't count. So let's say three years and, and 10 months, right? Um, I think any employer that would go, oh, I don't want to hire this guy, even though he's qualified and blah, 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 right? I would, uh, I wouldn't want to work for somebody like that. You know what I mean? I wouldn't want to work for somebody who would be like, oh, <laughs> no, you can't work here. Get out of here. Um, and uh, I think a perfect example of that would be that, uh, a long time ago, I went through an interview for a job and the guy was like, oh, no, we don't hire anybody if you have tattoos. And it was like, I like at all, that's just your, pro that's like your weird, your thing. I'm like, okay, well, I can't work here then, you know, I, cause I, first of all, I can't get rid of my tattoos. Uh, so, you know, so it's really one of those things. There are some unreasonable, um, employers out there, but if they were going to go like, oh, wow, hey, you're like sober guy, right? Oh, well, we don't want sober guy working here. I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't want to work for somebody who was like not cool with that. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, uh, never really, never really has been that much of a concern of mine. Um, and, uh, like I said, I had posted those things onto Facebook because, uh, I felt like I wanted to be accountable for a, a decision that I was making that, um, or at least to admit that the things that I've been doing in my life were wrong and I'm going to do my best to change them. And I wanted everybody else to go, all right, well, we, we acknowledge what you're saying. So if I don't follow up on what I'm saying, then I'm not accountable for it. And then there was really no way for me to just, uh, kind of sweep it under the rug. You know what I mean? So, uh, I went that way and then day two, I felt like, oh, wow, I'm going to write another thing. I'm just going to put another thing up here because it's, it's the second day. And I had a lot of people to kind of respond to, you know? So then the, um, the third day it felt like, okay, well, I think maybe I'll, I'll post another thing up here. And then it just kept going. Um, and I got to a point where, you know, I was like 180 days in or something like that. And I had posted 
basically every day. I think I missed one day because I was uh, hiking up in a mountain and there was no cell service or something like that. Um, so then I just did every single day throughout the first throughout the whole year. You know, uh, Mateo's asking Tats Effect your ability to cook. No, it was actually for an aquarium company, and I'm not going to mention who the aquarium company is because it's stupid at this point, and it would be probably. Oh, not cool, but I'll say it's not the aquarium co-op. It was not the fish store. It was not, um, uh, I don't know. It was not any of the local stores in the area that are still around now, but we have a $14 and one cent super chat from the zombie drummer saying a penny for every day. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, I definitely appreciate it. And um, I don't know if I ever... Oh, I did reply to the zombie drummer, right? Didn't I? He sent me an awesome email, and I think I... Re Gosh, I hope I replied to it. I think I did. Because I, along those lines, um, I, have a, I got an awesome email from uh, Borg Aquatics. It's awesome pictures of his chickens and stuff. And I wish I could put them up on the Patreon uh, or something like that so everybody else could check them out. But I would recommend to Borg to maybe post a couple of these chicken pictures onto the Patreon because they're awesome. And people have been asking me about the chickening. If anybody is interested about the chickening, those videos will be coming out. Never fear. There is a, a bit more production that has to go into them in order to get them um, uh, to get those videos out. But they will be coming, that's for sure. So, um just uh, stay tuned for the chickening videos. And Caleb uh, is our producer. Uh, he gets the producer credit for one of the chickening videos, which is definitely why I, there's more production that goes into it because I'm trying to follow through on all of the things that he asked for. Um, and if anybody's wondering who Caleb is, Caleb is our number one fan, okay? He's my number one favorite fan. He's our buddy out in... Um, uh, Montana. He's seven years old, and he is going through uh, child leukemia. And we, I have definitely been doing my best to share around his GoFundMe. Uh, it is a, it, it's been a pretty much a ridiculous. Uh, it's been a ridiculous interaction um, with the United States, essentially. Um, uh, with you know, uh, a kid that has leukemia and, you know, it, just the ball getting dropped and going, okay, well, you guys are just going to have to deal with this yourselves kind of thing. Um, and, uh, his mother Candy is one of our, uh, great moderators who is here keeping, uh, keeping an eye on the, the nonsense that does happen every once in a blue moon and whatnot, uh, and contributing to the, t to the, um, uh, the talks and the chat and all the cool stuff going on around here. And, uh, so we're trying our best to help them, uh, hit their, their GoFundMe goal. That is the big thing that we're charging for. And, uh, we're going to keep rocking and rolling on that. I got some super chats here. I missed because I was yammering on about stuff. So, <laughs> uh, Let's address them real quick. Why not? We've got a $5 super chat from the Aquarium Co-op. Says, uh-oh, got to help fill up that super chat box at the top of the chat. <laughs> it's, uh, it's back down there. It's back up to the lonely Kevin Keener. But that is totally cool, you guys. We've definitely hit our super chat mark. Uh, I would say um, go ahead and um, if you guys feel like you have extra money kicking around or whatever, go ahead and give it to uh, Caleb Overhauls. So that's where I would... Uh, that's where I would direct my. That's where I direct my attention, you guys. And um, you know, I, I appreciate you guys helping fund the stuff that's going on here. Uh, you know, speaking of that, Victor sent out the Mister Brown's coffees, and I'm gonna be brutally honest here. I gotta order some more because I, <laughs> I love these coffees, and <laughs> I do have like two of them a day, which maybe is too much, but I'm still sleeping good, so probably doing all right. Well, we got a 279 super chat from Mr. B's Fishing Things from snowy New Brunswick, Canada. Well, thank you very much, Mr. B. Robbie Rob says, I picked up six L134 around four months ago, and I think they are all females. How unlucky is that? 
Need to find myself a mail or two now. Ah. Oh, sorry to hear that. Uh, Karen Pepe, isn't it illegal to ask certain private questions? It is illegal to ask certain private questions, um, but they just, uh, they weren't actually asking a question. I think they just made a statement. I think they just made a straight up statement that they were like, we don't do that. Um, their rationale behind it was that their clientele did not want uh, people with tattoos around them. I don't know. But I've seen all sorts of craziness uh, in my life, and I just said, well, I wouldn't want to work for these guys anyhow because that's ridiculous. So I'll see you I'll see you on the flippity flop, you know what I mean? And uh, so I got out of there. Daryl Dimer with the $5 super chat. Uh, thank you very much, my guy. Uh, always being always being awesome. You're on the Real Fish Talk. I see you here. Always being around. And that's awesome, man. And uh, thank you. Daryl Dimer, uh, awesome fish fan, contributor, and whatnot. Uh, Joel G. from New Zealand says, equally, there are a lot of work situations where in the interview, they're like, I hope you can drink. Uh, yuck, 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 yuck. Uh, yeah, I've been down that road, too. Um, you know, especially in the restaurant business, there are a lot of uh, there's a lot of drugs and alcohol problems and stuff like that. So it's not a I don't think it's a new thing in that environment. But uh, this is one of those times where I was like, I, I just don't want to do the, the restaurant thing anymore. Uh, mainly because I could never really find a uh, a restaurant situation that really worked for me uh, up until the last uh, little cafe that I was running. It was a cafe attached to a uh, catering company. Uh, that was actually a place that where I could I you know I liked working there. There were a lot of nonsensical problems, but uh, I, I enjoyed working there. It was, it was Monday through Friday. I had a small clientele that I was working for. Um, it just never really took off. Uh, it never really took off well enough uh, to maintain that part of the business. So the catering part really took off and it was like, the, you know, just a straight business decision was like, we got to stop doing this cafe thing because we just got to focus on the catering. Like we're doing so well with that, that it was like, which makes sense. I mean, it was just a straight up business decision. It's like, you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't keep a, Oh, what's, uh, let's stay with, const let's stay with construction. Like if you were a, a plumbing and roofing company, but no one ever hired you, hired you for roofing, you wouldn't keep like doing the roofing thing. You know what I mean? You'd be like, let's just focus on the plumbing. Cause we're doing real good with our plumbing, you know? So, um, yeah, so that was just the the basic business decision with those guys, and uh, you know, the uh, uh, terrific way to move on from a job. You you get a really good severance package, and it gives you opportunity to find a new gig and everything. So uh, word up to those guys. Uh, love them, still love them, and uh, get to hang out with a lot of people from there whenever I can when uh, football's going on, because a lot of them still come down and watch football games with me, which is awesome. Hold on, I'm throwing away my garbage. All right, there we go. I have to lean over to uh, throw away my garbage. So, sorry about that. Um, BC Fish Room is going for the, the ghetto super chat crown. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the aquarium co-op with the 99.98 super chat uh, saying, I'm matching this donation for Caleb. Oh, nice. That is awesome. And, uh, that's awesome. That's totally cool. And, uh, yeah, that's totally cool. And I just noticed you weren't fibbing, man. I checked up on it. Corey or Kobe, sorry. <laughs> Coopy, Coupe, Coupe was legit. I just checked it. Right over here. Just went right over to the GoFundMe and checked it. And he's already made good on his word like he normally does, which is cool. Uh, Bobby Rosenbaum showing up saying, hey, what's up, guys? Well, good to see you. Um, whoa, we got a bunch of other Super Chats we got to get, get on here. Uh, the Fish Nerd, 
with a 999 super chat says giving to Caleb's GoFundMe for sure, but still super chatting here too because I appreciate you telling me not to in favor of Caleb. Oh, well, that's just uh, that's just the honesty. You know, that's just me being honest, you guys. Uh, I would rather see Caleb's GoFundMe uh, go over the mark than um, than. I don't even have a GoFundMe, so I don't know. But uh, <laughs> you know, that's, that's that. Honestly, that that's what I would like to see. There we go. All right, let's just simplify whatever the statement. What I, I was trying to say. I, that's what I would like to see. That would be an amazing jump for joy moment. Um, and I'd I'd probably freak out. And I do have you guys hold your horses. I do have some plans. I do have some plans. I can't tell you what they are. This is another one of those things where I can't tell you what the plan is, but I've got a plan. And I might, or I might not, put it to fruition. But I probably will. <laughs> M. Howie 9 with the 499 Super Chat with no question on it or anything. Just throwing it in the tip jar. Thank you very much. Uh, Karen Pepe says, back in the day, all tattooed guys could only work in gas stations and car washes. Yeah, you know, it's just... Hopefully, uh, you know, we're in a, it's 2018. We're in the 21st century. Uh, hopefully people will get over that kind of stuff, but you never know. You never know if they really are. I don't know. I don't have an answer. I don't have a, I don't have a crystal ball or anything like that. Um, Koopy is the aquatic corp guy. Woot. Go Kobe. I'm a huge fan of Corby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mateo says plans for maybe a video well that, those plans are for videos are already those are those wheels are already moving I got some I got some other I got some other plans you guys I got some other plans that are going to be uh, uh, I just can't wait to get the uh, I don't know how do you how do you how do you describe that? It's like, you know, you got to get the axe into the tree, you know, you start sawing some wood. You got to start hewing some lumber, you know what I mean? So, who knows? Um, Jabir Stockton is here. I'm waiting to breed, or I'm wanting to breed slash create a particular guppy color variation and finnage trying to figure out how much of what gene is given from mama or dad it matters in breeding chickens trying to learn fish genes um mr kobe from the aquarium co-op did a great presentation on that uh at the portland uh, aquarium society and i believe multi-tank addiction uh, otherwise known as Chris from Multi Tank Addiction, he actually recorded and posted that whole talk. Um, so maybe somebody can go grab the link for that, <clears throat> uh, and uh, you'd be able to listen to that. It's actually uh, it was a very good talk, and it explains a whole bunch of that guppy breeding uh, in a fantastic way. And maybe the coop has a maybe uh, maybe Cor Kobe over there at the Aquarium Co op. Uh, has a shorter video of that that maybe is more concise, but I would um, I would tune into multi tank addictions. It's like an hour long video. Uh, I would just listen to the audio uh, and just listen to what Corey's talking about and all that kind of stuff, and definitely run him through. And big shout out to Chris at Multi Tank Addiction, uh, cool dude. Uh, and uh, it was great to meet him when we went down to Portland and uh, went to the uh, Greater Portland uh, Society Aquarium Society group portland greater um <laughs> kevin keener says i like your super chat Corey. uh i'm stuck on an iphone and reached my max early uh thanks for everything you're doing in the hobby ah thank you kevin <laughs> I guess uh, I guess the iPhone uh, super chat maxes out at ninety nine ninety nine. I'm guessing, uh, but thank you, thank you very much, uh, Sarah Kanopko with the nine dollar ninety nine super chat saying my local fish store gave me ten dollars off when I picked up a school of tetras this week. Maybe I can put it towards, or maybe you can put it towards a third guppy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, Miss Sarah Kanopko knows the story of my guppy pair. I have a male and a female that were very, very small. They came in on a shrimp delivery. Um, we got some shrimps from Mr. Potato Bro, and um, there happened to be two little guppies there. Uh, it was one male and one female. And uh, we were talking about how cool it would be to start out with just two guppies and uh, start your whole colony just from two guppies, which then I got roped into it. <clears throat> so luckily, um, luckily, my uh, my female is pregnant, and I moved the male to the sump. So the female has not dropped her babies yet. She has not dropped her fry yet, and I don't know why. It's just a waiting game at this point, and I just can't wait. I don't know. She hasn't popped yet, or she just eats too many sandwiches. I don't know. It's one of the two things. She's either pregnant, which she looks like she's pregnant. She looks like she's carrying around fry and just has not given birth to the babies yet so i don't know i just ever forward you know what i mean it's just like i ain't got time i ain't got time to like be tripping over some guppy not giving out their babies but to those of you out there that are excited about me getting more fish that will be happening next week so this is a bit of a preview. There will be some fish next week. New fish. New fishes. So uh, those will be coming in next week. And I'm happy to say they will be able to go. Basically, they'll be able to go right into the tank because uh, <clears throat> they are in quarantine right now. Well, they're getting medicated. They're getting medicated and quarantined, so it uh, should be good to go. <clears throat> and uh, we'll get them all. That's coming next week, and I'm not going to tell you what they are. Because I don't want to spoil the surprises! You know what I mean? I don't want to spoil that. don't want to spoil those surprises. Uh, <laughs> Betsy Cummings says, a watched fish never pops, or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> it's right along those lines, I believe. Uh, but we do have a super chat here from Kyle Paith. My man, Kyle Paith, what's up? Um, uh, says, I've honestly lost track of how many times I've donated to Caleb's GoFundMe. Want to say number three, but who knows? Love how much the fish fam comes together. Uh, me too. I, I love it. I love how much, uh, the fish fam here actually cares about everybody else. I would include myself into that club by saying that, yes, uh, frankly, I do care a lot uh, about the fish fam and the people around here and the subscribers and the fans and stuff like that, which is um, because a little while ago, I think um, we were, I think it was a couple weeks ago, we were actually talking about, um, you know, I do from time to time, I get some hate mail. I just really do. I get some people that are mad about whatever. And I was trying to think about why it affects, it affects me so much. And so I was kind of looking into it like from the scientific standpoint, right? And a lot of scientists will say that, you know, our instincts and stuff like that is if, if somebody's negative, if somebody's being negative to you or whatever, that like the evolution of people, uh, you know, back in the day, that meant that somebody was either trying to kill you or they were going to run you out of town or um you know, like the Salem witch trials, you know, like burn people. So, you know, it's like, it's not good. Um, and they were saying that like that is explicitly why the reaction to negativity is so strong is because of that. It's just built, kind of built in as an evolutionary thing. And um, which I don't discount what they're saying. I don't discount exactly what they're saying. Um, But I think it's a little bit more than that because um, I think it's a little bit more than that because it, it, I think it really boils down to not just evolution, but I think it, it boils down to, you know, I really do care a lot. And then it, when I get these like, you know, these reactionary angry people or whatever, then I'm like, what happened? You know, what did I do wrong? And, you know, if I care a lot. 
and then I go, well, what did I do wrong? Then that evokes a lot of emotion and stuff like that. So I think that's really what it boils down to when, um, you know, when we, that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, so I would include myself in that group of the fish fam. I really do care uh, about people. I really do care about everybody's, you know, everybody doing well as best we can uh, and team up to try and, like, fix the big problems that we can. And, um and help fix the small problems too. And everything in between, I think you guys can handle the legwork, you know, like picking up groceries and stuff, you know, that stuff can be handled, right? <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, it's something that I definitely focus on. And, um, you know, it's, it's the whole reason I do this two hour show. Um, you know, the whole reason I do this two hour show and not just put out, um, you know, videos that would essentially just, you know, essentially only putting out videos that could like go viral or whatever, you know what I mean? Um, that's one of the reasons I started doing this show instead of just only making uh, little edited videos. There will be a point in time where I'd like to be able to get more edited videos out, but, um, it, but at some point in time, um, or... Sorry, at some point in time, I decided I want to have more interaction with you guys. So that's why, uh, and I could never really get the live stream off the ground up until like a year ago um, when I just started doing it basically like every day. <laughs> and uh, so I'm, I'm very appreciative for it. You know, I mean, I tried to do this like five years ago, didn't really work. Tried to do it like four years ago, didn't really work. Tried to do it like three years ago, didn't really work. But about a year ago, it started to work, you know. And I'd, I'd basically have like 20 people, 30 people in here at a time. And now we normally have 200, 300 people in here. And uh, I'm super appreciative of it. And the and the most, the best that I can do for you guys is what I always try to do. And sometimes I don't know anything and try to tell you that too. Um <laughs> uh, uh, Lexi V is here. Is it okay that I'm eating goldfish crackers or have I committed a faux pas? Um, no, goldfish crackers are delicious, man. Those are super delicious. Uh, goldfish crackers. Yeah, I would definitely be eating some goldfish crackers if I had them around here right now, which is why I don't have them because I have to be talking into the microphone. Uh, you guys are probably on a regular basis pretty infuriated for me eating cookies on here, which is bad enough. <laughs> but uh, goldfish crackers, delicious, and I love them. Oh, Mary Beth Mabe, I see you're in the chat. What's going on? Ooh, taking the bus is not a great thing, but it gets me to work. Yeah, I, I mean, I... I used to, um, I used to take the bus, I took the bus for years. I used to be a bus guy. Uh, I would just ride the bus. Just was way easier, uh, for many years. Well, I don't know if it was easier, but it was just better for me to do, I guess. I don't know. I used to ride the bus all the time. And, uh, there was one point in time where, uh, it was snowing and none of the buses rang. And, uh, so like for like three days I had to walk like, um, six miles each way to work in the snow back and forth, which was, that was an added workout that I was not expecting and was, I still recall it. It was brutal and it was cold and it was unfun. Um, uh, but I survived and here I am today. Uh, Randy Hightower says, had a little trouble some months back breeding sword tails. Any tips or do we need, or do we just need more hiding places for the fry? Um, Sword tails will generally chew up fry. They generally will. So, um, I would uh, I would invest in a breeder box and then let the fry get to a couple days old before you release them into the tank. That's the that's that's the easiest trick with uh, breeding sword tails and and having a high rate of survive survivability. If you have like lots of other sword tails in the tank, um, they'll eat them up pretty quickly like right after they're born um uh but once they're kind of free swimming and sort of a little fish they most of the sword tails will just kind of leave them alone so uh i would use utilize a breeder box for the female to let her release her fry and then uh, just keep the fry in there keep them fed uh, for a couple of days and um, then you can release them into the tank and they'll generally be all right
Caroline Epler, Uphill Both Ways. Uh, no, it wasn't Uphill Both Ways. It was um, Downhill in the Morning and Uphill Home, which is a drag. It would have been much better the, the other way around. If it was Uphill to Work and then Downhill Home, that would have been cooler. Oh, well, we are coming up on the one hour mark, so let's talk a little bit about today's video. You guys that have been uh, following the channel for a good amount of time know that uh, I recently set up a 60 gallon cube and I moved the killifish from the 240 gallon tank over to the 60 gallon cube, right? I think everyone got the vibe that uh, I was unsatisfied with the scape and. I was. I was, in fact, unsatisfied with what I had going on in there, and I knew how it was going to grow out, and I knew that I was never really going to reach a happy point with how the tank was laid out. I still, still may have a minor thing to do, but we'll get to that during the video. But um, the... Um, <laughs> Gabe Jamon asks, uh, how would it be uphill both ways? Well, see, if you go uphill, then downhill, then coming back, you'd go uphill and then down, right? So you'd have up and uphill both ways. So I guess technically it was, because where I was at, you had to go up over this big bridge and then up over a hill and then down, 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 down to work, down by the ocean. It'd start out at like 700 feet elevation, get down to sea level right on the water down there. And then, uh, you know, go all the way back up on the way home. Drag. Uh, in the snow. Yeah. But uh, I certainly wasn't happy with the 60-gallon. Uh, it did not work out the way that I wanted it to be. And it wasn't going to grow in the way I wanted it to. I mean, sometimes you set up a tank and it just doesn't look great right at the beginning. But you know, you know, a few months down the road that it's going to work out. Because once everything grows in, you're going to be like, dude, awesome. Right? But... Um, this tank was never really going to reach that point. Uh, it never was really just going to fill in with plants and then be like, whoa, it's super awesome. You know, um, Mr. B, relax. We'll get to the video, man. We're, uh, three minutes away from the video and I'm just letting you guys know about what's going on. Um, but this one never really was going to grow in to like becoming, you know, it never was going to grow into the princess. You know what I'm saying? It was just always going to be, uh, or sorry, not the princess. You couldn't kiss it and have it turn into a prince like the frog and the prince, right? Uh, it was never going to get there. It was just never really going to get there. So uh, the rescape has begun. The killifish habitat is reaching a new goal. Uh, Savannah the Aqua Llama says, yeah, I mentioned that Stephen Hawking earlier, so sad, we lost an amazing brain and outstanding human. Um, yeah, it is sad that Stephen Hawking passed away, uh, but he lived to a very old age with a disease that normally kills people at the age of like 20. Um, so I think we're realistically pretty blessed and uh that is as far as i can tell from the things that he wrote about that's how he felt about it um that uh that he was pretty blessed to uh have lived as many years so it is sad that he passed away um i'm glad it didn't happen 50 years ago because he's done a lot of awesome work in the meantime and um you know barring some of his social snafus um he definitely did a lot of good uh, work for um, for the the betterment of humanity, I guess, realistically. Uh, Penelope Flores. Uh, sorry, Penel Penelope. I don't know how to say Penelope in Spanish, but Penelope was asking if I spoke Spanish. Yes. Habla español. Un poquito es similar a un hijo, más o menos. Yeah. Um, did someone say cryogenetics freeze that brain? 
Yeah. Let's see here. D. Thomas CG says he's kicking it with Galileo, Einstein, and the rest of the greats out there in the universe. Yeah, I mean, he's uh, he probably is just spanning time uh, with his mind. Um, but yeah, it is. I mean, it is sad that he passed away. But just bear in mind, we're all going to pass away at some point in time, you guys. And uh, but he did manage to have a uh, a pretty darn fantastic life, even though he was pretty much fated for for nothing. Uh, and by that extension. I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to tie it in to Mr. Caleb Overhaul's. This is a perfect example right here that we do have a lot of hope and a lot um, and and hopefully a ton of life to look forward to. Right. Hopefully he, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying he lived to be 76 years old, just like Stephen Hawking did. That's a long run. Know what I mean? So. We got a lot. We got a lot going on here that could be good. And it is good. And it's going to be good. I'm confident that it's going to be good. So we're going to keep rocking. We're going to keep rolling. And, you know, maybe Caleb is the next Stephen Hawking, I think. The probability is high. Probability is high, my guy. You know what I'm saying? So let's move on to the video. Video time video time but i didn't pause it at the beginning what is wrong with me today this is like a regular chain of events around here where i just kind of uh, mess things up right <laughs> but as i mentioned earlier um <laughs> dmc of the sea is asking if i want a uh, a catfish uh no not really i don't really want a catfish right now but we're going on to the video here, and as I mentioned earlier, I am going to be utilizing a piece from the 240 that I think is going to fit perfectly into the 60 gallon. And initially, it hadn't really crossed my mind that I was going to uh, be putting this into the 60 gallon uh, up until maybe like two weeks ago, and I just thought, Wait a minute. Because I you know my my initial thought was wait a minute. I've really got to redo the 240. I don't I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling how it's going. I'm not feeling that it's doing what I want it to be doing, right? And uh so I was like, okay, well if I am going to be uh working on redoing the 240 gallon here, that piece is not going to make a lot of sense where it's at. But wait a minute, I could put this into the 60 and it's going to fit basically perfectly. And chances are I'm not going to get another piece of wood like this uh, for probably a long time. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not saying it's out of the realm of possibility. Uh, it's something that I could certainly pick up. Um, but generally speaking, there just aren't that many pieces of wood like this around um, that even make the, um, you know, that they, they even like make it to market so you can actually even buy them. Uh, so there's just not even that many around, let alone the price, you know. But, um, you know, I was just considering it and I was like, hmm, that piece is going to fit right into the 60 gallon and it will start to make that that 60 gallon cube make sense. So, out she comes. Out comes that old piece of wood out of the right-hand side of the 240. But on the upside that I think is really important here to remember is that this is going to allow me to completely redo the... Um, <coughs> the 240 when it becomes time to do the 240 it is going to open up all the space where the stuff that i needed to move to um where things are going to be relocated to that chunk that big piece of wood was going to be right in the way so that means that my new scape for the 240 is actually going to come together um really quickly really readily and not uh and not really skip a beat it's really just going to just uh, I'm just going to be able to just go hammer town on it because now I've, I've unoccupied the space that I'm going to need in order to 
you know, accomplish the uh, the 240 rescape, which just desperately needs to be done. Um, you know, when Bracken was here over the weekend, we were both looking at it, and you know, my initial setup on the 240 was uh, to build it so it was basically you know one tank on this side, one tank on this side, all in one tank. So like two scapes, and I, I'm not enjoying how how broken it feels at this point. So that's the 240 is going to get redone and just essentially become one big tank. Um, so, but the 60 gallon, like I was saying earlier, was just never going to grow into what I wanted it to grow into. Uh, it was just kind of mishmashed. Uh, somebody thought I had three different ki kinds of rock in here. I've actually only got two different kinds of rock in here. Um, but I just just not enjoying how it was coming together. Um, and, you know, just the overall appeal. And as I said earlier, I knew it wasn't going to, like, grow into, um, like, a better-looking tank. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't just going to end up looking better, you know, uh, at, any, at, at any point in time. No matter how grown in or whatnot, it, it, you know, it, it would probably look kind of pretty once all the plants were grown in and stuff like that because uh you know grown in plants are are attractive you know what i mean so uh it probably would have looked cool for that but it wouldn't have looked great um and you guys know that i basically only have let's see here one two three four five i have five tanks and five sumps now so um, as, uh, as the aqua pros was saying when he was here, he's like, no, you got 10 tanks because you got all these sumps. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I basically have like five display tanks. And the last thing that I want to do is have some janky looking, um, display tanks, you know? And somebody asked me a while ago if I'm ever going to add any tanks to this uh, space. And realistically, one of the big reasons I'm looking for acrylic 120s is because Vicky desperately needs an acrylic 120 to go onto her stand, right? Um, and uh, if I could find somebody that could actually make acrylic 120s for a reasonable price, I'd probably buy a bunch of them <laughs> if I could. I'd buy as many as I could. Um because the those acrylic 120s are by far my favorite, 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 favorite tank um, size. And uh, they would definitely, I could fit a bunch of them into the fish room and replace, you know, replace certain tanks. Like where the 180 is, I could replace it with two 140s. Or, uh, sorry, two 120s. Uh, where the 240 is, I could replace it with two 120s. Um, where the cube is and the 150 and Vicky's tank, there could be three 120s right there. So at some point in time, I, I hope to find somebody who can actually kind of build out some of those tanks and maybe go in there or, um, open a gigantic fish farm in, uh, in Idaho <laughs> and just do that instead. Who knows? Um, but so this giant piece of driftwood had a bunch of java moss and some physidens stuck to it. And that wasn't going to work out long term in this tank very well. Uh, it would end up just being overgrown and kind of overladen with, uh, you know, with like doo-doo and stuff like that. You know, like some of the doo-doo the poo-poo, right? You know what I mean? So it wasn't going to work out the way that this tank was going to be operated. This isn't going to work out that well, mainly for the killifish. They do, uh, uh, they do need a lot of feeding and 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 uh, and stuff like that. So it just does a, it would end up accumulating too much detritus to to really have it end up looking all that great. Um, and we do have a lot of flow in this tank when the tank is turned on. Right now, as I'm rescaping it, it's actually turned off, and I'm shooting a time lapse as it clears up right now while we're doing the show. Uh, but there's a lot of flow in this tank because I want to maintain a good amount of movement of water in here because of the killies. Um, one of the problems with killifish, uh, especially the garden areas like this, is uh, if you drop down flow, they start to search for a new area of water. Uh, and that is just a built-in 
response to the areas that they're from, the area where the areas where they come from. Um, they are expecting a big time drought to come, so they're they're in search of uh, new mud puddles and those kinds of things where they can move, 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 and get to a new body of water. So I'd like to keep the flow moving on the killifish, and then that tends to content them a lot more um, than uh, if if you just have s sort of slow. Uh, water moving around um if you keep the water moving around they basically think like oh hey we're in a cool little stream and uh everything's going fine so they have a, a real tendency to not jump from the tanks and stuff like that or try to search out for new areas and stuff so um that uh so the java moss and the physidens and whatnot aren't going to work out very well i even had some physidens on uh, that other piece of driftwood into the in the 60 here and ended up uh, taking that out because it just really wasn't um, going to do well in this space. Uh, I'll have to find a spot for that, like the if you want to call it Fizzidin's tree, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'll find a spot and nicely in the background where it can just hang out and uh, not have a, a, a blazing light shining right on it or anything like that. And uh, I think it'll work out pretty darn good. Pretty darn well. Pretty darn good. It's going to work out pretty darn good. Right? Um, so, with that said, I don't have any other real plants that need to come out of here in the meantime. But I am going to be building some... As you, as you guys know, my favorite things in the world, Anubias glued to sticks. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I'm definitely going to be adding some Anubias glued to sticks that I'll be able to insert into this and sort of make a cool tree. And then I'll still be able to move them around and relocate them if I have uh, if I have too much um, too much light shining directly on them or whatnot. I can actually like, kind of move them move them around. And, uh, and, uh, that will help me kind of build sort of, uh, I know most people reference it as like a bonsai or whatnot, uh, but I'm going to call it a tree of life. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of what I'm going for. I'm going for a tree of life, not a bonsai tree. Tree of life, babe! Vicky's here, so I'm going to shout at her in the other room because that's, you know, this is how we get down. Uh, but you can definitely see the difference as we go back to the beginning of the video here as it starts to replay again. You can see the difference of clarity um, from the, the 240 to the 60 as I was bashing things around in the 60 and whatnot. Uh, but let me catch up on the chat here a little bit and say hi to some people. Uh, one drop base had to go. Oh, one drop base. I'll see you later. Sorry you had to go, but hopefully it's for a good reason and nothing bad going on. Uh, KG Cichlids says, I see 90-year-olds walking like they're in their 60s all the time. Makes me wonder what they do. Uh, probably not sitting in front of a computer, right? <laughs> that could be it. Um, as, uh, as all the doctors will say, you want to stay active at least a half an hour a day. Um, I would recommend, personally, I'd recommend more than that. I would recommend, like, you got to have a good three hours of activity every day. got to wear yourself down a little bit. Um, even on days where I'm stuck in the office here working, um, I got my, I got my 25 pounders down there. I pick them up, I put them down, I pick them up, I put them down. I do my squats. Uh, I do all that stuff. Uh, even if I'm stuck in the office, uh, all day, I don't, I don't think I ever hit the three hours of working out in here, but you want to stay three hours active. Um, my biggest recommendation on, on, uh, staying active and feeling good, uh, going for walks, just go walk around the block. Walk around the block, walk around the block, just walk around your neighborhood, wherever you're at, um, and uh, and go for it. Um, oh, <laughs> Mellow Moogles, uh, loving the, watching the shrimp uh, abandon ship. Yes, uh, there are, uh, <laughs> there are a surprising amount of shrimp in the 240, just... We put some in the sump. Uh, Potato and I put some sh shrimps in the sump, and they have just spread all throughout my fish room pretty much. Uh, slowly but surely, they just kind of make their way into all the tanks, and uh, they just show up, and there they are. Mary Beth Mabe says, 171 watching and 131 thumbs up. Hello? Hit the thumbs and the subscribe button. That's right. You got to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button, or Skynet gets mad at us. Uh, and we don't want the robot overlords to 
you know, we don't want them to be angry. We want them to be satiated with thumbs ups and subscribes and those kinds of things, right? Otherwise, you know, they, then they're going to send Terminators back in time or whatever and like try and get us, you know, which is, which is uncool. I got, I got Borg Aquatics chicken pictures over here and they're, they're pretty fantastic. I like his chicken coop. His chicken coop is great. I hope he posts it up on Patreon uh, so you guys can check that out. <clears throat> Sorry. Total sidebar there. <clears throat> Looked like I was picking my nose, but I was trying to go like this. Hey. Um, I'll pick my nose later, okay? <laughs> uh, Dan Squire says, Kevin Keener still rocking the red super chat. So cool. Yes, thank you very much, Kevin. That is... Big time. I'm definitely going to have to have Kevin over for my birthday barbecue next month. Um, now, now, I'm going to definitely have to have him come over. I got a new smoker. I'm going to smoke some brisket and things like that. It's going to be... It's going to be cool, I think. Um, let's see. Reading the chat. Reading the chat. See if there's a thing to answer. Freshman Aquatics is asking, if I put a Fluval 2.0 on a 55-gallon, 21 inches tall, by the way, uh, would the light amount be considered low, medium, or high at the gravel? Thank you. Um, uh, Dan Squire says medium. Um... I would say it's probably in the medium range, but we do have to remember that the LED light, even though it is giving uh, off of a different PAR reading, um, that LED light is much more directional and has a lot more PUR. Instead of P-A-R, it has a lot of P-U-R, which is uh, parenthetic usable radiation, uh, which means that you might get a higher light readout from a brighter light on a PAR meter, but it may not be as usable for the plants. So you might have just more light, right? But it's not as usable. So far, I have found that the the Fluval 2.0s, the Fluval, the new 3, 3.0s, or whatever the, the Fluval new lights, um, they are putting out a good amount of light and they're growing just about everything from uh, Monte Carlo to Styrogene to Anubius. Uh, you don't don't want to have your Anubius in direct light uh, from those buggers because they'll they'll grow some algae. That's for sure. Um, but this is this light. I would definitely recommend. I, I've certainly recommended the the Fluval light many 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 times, and um, I would continue to recommend it. Um, where did this, where did the, you guys, I normally have my links over here, and I don't know what happened to them. Uh, let me find this. Let me find this real quick. There it is. Oh, wow. Okay. Hold on just a second here. Hold on. Does this work? What's wrong with this button? copy there we go then i gotta take it over here i'm sorry guys this this does take a minute oh <sighs> this does take a minute when i don't have this already which i don't it's my bad you know i don't i gotta copy it into like three different places so that i can actually post it into there we go Copy. Okay, there we go. Now I've got it. Oh, you guys, I've got the link. I'm coming at you hot and fresh with the link while I click the buttons here. All right. Okay. So here is the link. I can post it into the chat. There you go. Um, you can all go ahead and order some of those lights from that link. And where did it go? Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, there is... The, the link for those Fluval lights, if you want to go ahead and grab those, anybody out there, that's what I'm utilizing pretty much exclusively in the fish room now. Um, I'm finding them to be 
very attractive, very usable, and they're using a lot uh, less wattage and whatnot. They're very efficient. I'm, I'm very happy with them. Um, so if anybody wants to order some of those, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But I would definitely recommend them. I'm finding them to be very, very effective. Uh, and the usable light coming off of them is, is working quite well. Uh, let's see. Mrs. Garcia. A lot of people are responding to Mrs. Garcia. What happened here? Is everything all right? Is everything okay? Where did it go? Oh, Mrs. Garcia. Hi, everyone. First time here. Oh, howdy. Good to see you. Thanks for coming out. We appreciate it. Uh, Penelope retracted a message. Maybe that was a uh, we were talking about something earlier. Um, Randy Hightower is asking, can you mix Gardneri and Blue Gularis peacefully? Uh, I don't have an answer for that. They might battle each other. Um, although they are very closely related, um, you know, they're like cousins. So, man, I don't know. You know what? I wouldn't risk it because maybe they breed with each other and make gross brown fish, but I can't say whether they would be habitable together or not. Um, I would say no, but I would definitely check with somebody who's more of an expert on mixing those. Um, in, in my experience, I try not to mix any cousins together of any kind of fish, just at all across the board. Uh, I definitely want to keep to specific species in specific uh, tanks because it just makes more sense to me. It makes it much easier for me to pay attention to what's going on, you know. Um, yeah, so that would be my recommendation if you can, if you can work that out. Um Let's see. Freshman Aquatic says brisket. You got to invite Bob over there. Uh, Bob Steenfot will not come to my house. I live in a part of town that he said he would not go to. Um, so, I mean, I would invite him. He's invited, but he said he wouldn't come to where I live. <laughs> so, I don't know. I'm, he probably wouldn't come, so I don't know. But let's see here. Uh, sometimes I want a second and a fit on the floor. Uh, let's see. Savannah Aqua says, okay, Alyssa, thank you. I don't mind being difficult. I just don't want to have to buy anything else. Won't kill your fish. Oh, okay, what happened here? I know I could get gel if I needed. I just wonder if I had to or if I could use what I had. Uh-oh, let's see here. Let's check out what's going on. Um... Uh, well, I have plain super glue and a and a tube, but it does not say gel. So I was wondering if that was the problem. Oh, yeah, you definitely want the gel type super glue. Um, I recommend the DAP version. Uh, it is my favorite DAP. It is my favorite gel type super glue. Uh, you can get a big, big bottle of it for like $4.99 at Home Depot. So it's not too bad. They last me a really long time. That's the best glue for gluing things in place uh, in fish tanks I've ever found. So it is my favorite one, and that's the one I use. Uh, the gel type is just way easier to manage, and the liquid stuff is just a pain, and, and it just doesn't doesn't work out well. They will peel off and fall off and uh, just kind of be pure chaos. So uh, I would always recommend the gel type, right? So that's what I would do. Let's see here. BC Fish Room says, "Sound like Bob's a bit of a stick in the mud. Uh, he doesn't like my he doesn't like my part of town. He thinks everyone uh, gets shot and murdered here and stuff like that. So, uh, but that's just that's just like his opinion, man. And uh, so I don't know. I'll I'll definitely invite him. You know, I'll see if he wants to come. I just don't think he will from." The conversations that we've had in the past where I was like, come to my place. He's even said this on the stream, on the on his live stream. I heard him talking about Tacoma once. And and then so I, I followed up. <laughs> I followed up and he was like, he was like, oh, no, man. There, I went there this one time and like there was some guy at the gas station tried to murder him or something. I don't know. I don't know what happened. But um, it turns out when I asked him where he really was, he was in Burien, which is 
20 miles from here, so I'm not really, you know, it is what it is. He'll be, he'll be invited, but. Uh, Betsy Cummings is asking, could you tell me how to plumb a sump when I don't want to drill my tank, or can I? Um, yeah, you can do hang on back overflows, um, but I'm not guaranteeing. I'm not guaranteeing that it will fail. I'm just saying it will fail. <laughs> You'll have chaos. Uh, I would drill a tank every time. Um, hang on back overflows just 99 times out of 100, water will end up on the floor at some point big, in a big way. In a big way. Not, oh, there's some drips down here. It's like, there, there will be a flood at some point in time. You know, you will need Noah's Ark. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I would certainly consider getting your tank drilled, and I would make sure that it works out. Let's see here. Oh, my gosh, the aquarium coop. The coupe has just said, Kobe himself says, confirmed we can build a 200 square foot greenhouse without having a permit. Yes. Perfect. So luckily, wherever Corey is, he has the same zoning in regards to that as I do down here. Uh, we can do a 10 foot by 20 feet. Uh, it, it, it might be that we could do a 12 foot by 18. I don't know. It's probably the square footage. I'll, I'm going to have to double check down here, um, before I build mine, but I was planning on building mine 10 foot by 20 foot. So I was like, cool, I'll just do that. <laughs> so, uh, I wasn't too concerned about it, but I can double check on my zoning down here, but I, it sounds like it's probably the same, uh, up where, where Kobe's at. 900 million miles from here. Um, so let's see. Uh, the, the Savannah, the Aqua Llama says, people think I live in a bad part of town too, but frankly, the most interesting thing that's ever happened was there was a mystery herd of goats loose in the neighborhood. Oh man, I would have got out my trailer and corralled me some goats, man. If that happened here, I'd just be free goats. Oh, man, I'd scoop me up some free goats, that's for sure. Um, Mellow Moogles asking the Aqualama in Hillsboro. Really? It's not, It's so nice out there, even the more rural areas. Uh, yeah, Hillsboro's nice. I always call it Marlboro uh, instead of Hillsboro. Uh, Potato, Mr. Potato Bro himself lives out there. And uh, very nice part of town, I have to admit. Uh, fishy mailman's late to the show. What shenanigans did I miss? Uh, you know, general shenanigans. A bunch of people super chatted like crazy. Uh, Corey was trying to uh, break the super chat button, I think. And uh, so we're um, we're at a we're at a lot. I'm gonna have a lot of say a lot of thank yous to the super chatters. Which I will continue to do. Like the fishy mailman dropped a or not the fishy mailman, sorry, Kevin Ke Kevin Keener. Uh, I'm talking to the fishy mailman, dropped a $100 super chat. So you missed that. The coop dropped a $100 super chat also. And a bunch of other very generous people like Tim Lewis, uh, Caroline Epler, the zombie drummer, Ashley Taylor, Daryl Dimer, Lisa Jobes, Barbara Jackson, Guppy Guru, uh, Mr. B's Fishing Things. I don't want to forget anybody. BC Fish Room, uh, The Fish Nerd, M. Howie 9, Sarah Canopko, and Gal Baith. Oh, yeah, try to get those thanks in. Uh, the Fishy Mailman's one of our big time supporters. Thank you, my buddy. My buddy. Good to see you. Sorry you're late, but that's okay. We're doing fine. Uh, we're rescaping the 60 gallon aquarium here, uh, getting it set up to actually look like a real aquascape and not just uh, have a bunch of stuff. Uh,. You know, just have a bunch of stuff in an aquarium and then go like, yeah, it's cool. I put a bunch of stuff in there. So I'm actually getting it sorted out. I'm happy to say that this piece fit in here almost perfectly. I did have to cut off a little nubbin so that it would fit. But uh, luckily, we only had to just trim this little tiny bit. So um, 
So yeah, that's pretty much what's going on today. And uh, now I'm just kind of to the point where I'm just kind of answering some questions out of the chat and things and just kind of chatting about what's going on. And HD Aqua is late as well. Oh, hey, better late than never. You know what I mean? If you can make it to the show, that's cool. Bracken says, uh, wouldn't you have to make it smaller unless you have a flat top as the area up above counts towards square footage, right? No, square footage is based on uh, the ground. Um, you know, if it's 10 foot by 20, that's 200 square foot. And uh, so it would be the, the, the ground measurement. Unless you go second story, and then you have a problem. But then a second story building would always need a building permit. It doesn't matter. Even if it was four foot by four foot, two stories, you still need to get a permit. Um, Caleb Money Hun, Caleb Money Hun <laughs> says, "My town has these cows that just run around in the streets at night." <laughs> I grew up in an area that there were just cows running around in the streets at night. That definitely happened uh, quite a bit where I grew up. Uh, no matter where I travel worldwide, people are like, oh, man, you better be careful. Guess what? Take a thousand people and you have the same percentages of everything. That's true. Um, definitely heard that before. Uh, JH Aquatics showing up. Uh, showing up. Good to see you. Cooking dinner and listening at the same time. Awesome. Chicken Lips 2 here with the 555 Super Chat on Pie Day. Coming in hot and fresh on Pi Day with the 555 Super Chat. Thank you very much, my man. Uh, it says, I'm also late. Going to have to catch up on the replay, see what all the shenanigans were. Uh, it was coming in hot and fresh with the uh, Super Chats. That's what was happening earlier. <laughs> wasn't really sure which direction the show was going to go, if we ended up just breaking the Super Chat button or not. Uh, luckily... It uh, clearly is apparently still intact and hasn't exploded, uh, but... Uh, I appreciate it, you guys. Like I said earlier, if you got all that extra change kicking around in your pockets, I would much rather you all spend it at the uh, the Caleb Overhauls GoFundMe. You know, that's uh, that's a big thing we're driving towards right now, trying to help out uh, one of the Fish Fam fam. You know, so that's what we're all about here. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, JH Aquatics brings up uh, brings up a point into my head that there's a possibility for a Peru trip this year but there is a possibility for a peru trip but let's talk about an actual trip that's going to happen i believe Cor kobe and jiminy noodle legs and i are going to be traveling to what is it wisconsin michigan uh minnesota i don't know we're going to be going to one of those states it's right up in that area up there it's going to be a big old fish uh fish meetup and Kobe is going to be doing a bunch of present, uh, present, presenting. I was going to say pres presentations. There we go. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, and uh, that will be uh, accumulating on May 4th, 5th, and 6th. Uh, so whatever that is in Michigan, I don't know what it is. I think it's in, gr oh, there we go. Kobe says Michigan. I believe it's in Grand Rapids, Michigan, now that I just started thinking about it. I think it's in Grand Rapids, Michigan, uh, May 4th, 5th, and 6th. We're going to be out there in person. So if you all, uh, people are wondering if I'm going to Peru or not, people have asked me a lot about that. I don't know. But I do know we're going to be road tripping. We're going to be road tripping across the great United States, driving out there to old Michigan. Uh, I believe it's 2,680 something miles. I think I looked, remember looking it up on the old Google Maps. And uh, so we're going to be road tripping across there, doing that, and uh, then hanging out and going to all the fish, fish extravaganza stuff. I'll be able to shoot lots of video and I'll be bringing a bunch of it back with me. And uh, we'll be able to do all that fun stuff out there so we'll be able to meet a bunch of people do all that fun stuff shoot a bunch of video and hopefully tour some uh some awesome facilities on the way there and the way back and it should be pretty good johnny o free is out he's gonna see you later okay see you later my man hit the 
subscribe button and the the like button or the robots will freak out. <laughs> the Skynet robot overlords designed by the computers are going to freak out, right? Um, Caleb says, I wish I could go to the library convention. Well, you should just go. You should just make it happen. Um uh, Mason French says, I'm excited to meet my favorite YouTuber, Kobe, in Michigan. Uh, cool. He will be there. You can meet me, your 16th favorite U- YouTuber, right? <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll go with 16th place. That feels right. It feels legit. It feels legit, like I'm not making it up. Uh, let's see. JH Aquatics is making kale kitchen and couscous. It's what's for dinner. Ah, delicious. That sounds good. I'm going to have to get my dinner rocking and rolling here. I don't have any more udon noodles, you guys. I'm wondering if I should go get some more so that Vicky will love it. Although I think she has something that she's going to tonight, so she won't be here for dinner. Hmm. I don't know. I think, I think that's what was happening. I'm not sure. I forget. All right. Getting on to some fan questions here. Savannah the Aqualama. Hey, Joel, how do I get four-leaf clover to grow in my aquarium and stop dying? Also, I posted a weird Patreon photo, so there's that when you get to it. (laughs) Uh, I typically get to the weird Patreon posts. Um, Now, hold on a minute here. What is going on? What is this thing doing? Now, hold on a second. What's this thing doing? All right, there we go. Um, Let's see here. Uh, I normally get to answering the community posts from the Patreon. If you have never been over to the Patreon, go check it out. It's a great community spot there where you can post pictures of things that are going on. You can ask questions, interact with the other Patreons, uh, Patreonizers. That's what I normally refer to y'all. Um... And uh, be able to interact with each other and like post pictures and stuff. And uh, as uh, as one of the things that I've mentioned is that uh, there's 284 people supporting on the Patreon, which is crazy. That's crazy um, and awesome. It's crazy in an awesome way. You know what I mean? Uh, but that's like 284 people that you could interact with that are definitely uh, part of the fish fan and whatnot. You know, it is a pretty darn, what I would consider a pretty safe space. It's it's easy for me to moderate the things that are going on there uh, because there's not hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people um, posting all sorts of crazy nonsense. Uh, so it's a really good spot to get in touch with, with either me or uh, uh, other people that are on there that are like, oh, hey, I had this happen once. I had that happen once, blah, blah, blah. This is how I, I worked through it. And uh so I, I think it's a pretty good, uh, I think it's a pretty good tool. And uh, considering the Patreon is just a once a month sort of contribution that starts out at a dollar, you could go all the way up to a hundred billion dollars if you want. But uh, it's like a dollar a month. It's a great way to support, and you get to be part of a, a pretty cool community, you know. So. <clears throat> Karen Pepe says, it's a tie between Dustin and you. You are both great to listen to. You guys are so real. It's like you're hanging out in my kitchen. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, Keith Bordley says, New Orleans red beans and rice with fried smoked sausage. That sounds great. That sounds fantastic. I'd be, in, ooh, I'd be into that tonight. I think. Uh, let's see. KG Sickler, what? What do you get? Corey's favorite meat is Kobe steak. Oh. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Swamp Tao says, I saw in a comment you've got experience with bivalves. What's your oyster in history? Uh, well, as a chef. Uh, in the Pacific Northwest, I live off of Puget Sound. So if uh, the many years that I have spent as a chef um, researching oysters and feeding oysters to people, shucking oysters, uh, going out to local oyster farms and stuff like that and checking out a bunch of the stuff, uh, I hopefully will be putting out 
a oyster farm video this year. I'm sort I'm trying to figure out a good time when I can go out to one of the local uh, oyster farms here and be able to actually do some shoots. So uh, I'm just trying to coordinate so I can get the right people in the video there. You know, sort of. Um, uh, a lot of the farmer guys maybe don't want to be interviewed and that kind of stuff, so I got to make sure that I'm there with the sort of faces of the company kind of people, uh, and not just show up and be like, "Hey, man, I'm shooting with my camera. What up?" You know. Uh, so hopefully we'll be doing some of that. I've done a fair bit of that myself, and I definitely have um, been. Oh, did I forget to answer your question? Oh, hold on a minute. But I definitely have spent a lot of time feeding bivalves to people, going out to the farms, working on that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, I've definitely gone out to the farms quite a few times to pull and stuff like that. And uh, it's they're awesome. And I would love to have a, a oyster farm someday, but I don't know if I'll ever get waterfront property in order to do it or a spot to rent out. I got distracted. I got distracted and I didn't answer Savannah's question. So let me see here. Where did it go? <laughs> Where did it go? I'm trying to read. I'm trying to read and find it. Um, where did it go? I think she was asking me about a four-leaf clover situation, and, um, oh, come on now. I know it's not below the Super Chat. It's got to be up here. This is uh, really good content, you guys. You should, this is the kind of content we should all tune in for, where I scroll around. Okay, here we go. Uh, there it is. Hey, Joel, how do I get four leaf clover to grow in my aquarium and stop dying? Also, I posted a weird Patre uh, Patreon photo, so there's that when you get to it. Oh, yeah, I got distracted because I went to look at your, uh, your weird picture. <laughs> and Donnie Hill posted, oh, Donnie Hill posted an update on the Patreon. Nice. Just that, just, just got that. Um, well, uh, any reasons why plants aren't growing, um, I realistically need more questions, uh, or I need more, not more questions. I need more information in order to figure out like what could be going wrong. Uh, you know, you could be low on phosphates. You could be low on nitrates. You could be low on nitrites. You could be low on, uh, magnesium. You could be low on anything. You could be low on light. You could, um, there's a bunch of stuff that goes into growing plants. I mean, I know, um, it's one of those things that like, I think there are certain times where a lot of people make it look super easy and uh, it relatively is like once you kind of just get the knack for it, once you've sort of, you know, been working with it for quite a while, um, I would definitely uh, try to figure out what was going on. Um, so, yeah, so it's four leaf clover. Okay, and why is it not? Why is it not um, growing? Could be any kind of. It, it's like I said. It just could be a ton of reasons. So I um, just got that. Everything else is fr is thriving. I use Easy Green Liquid and Easy Iron, and there are root tabs. It's the brightest part of my aquarium. Um, it could even be too bright. It could be melting because it's transitioning. Um, so, yeah, I mean, um, it could be just transitioning. Sometimes you get floor, four leaf clover and things like that, um, that were grown emergent and now you're, you've got them submerged. So you're probably going to have to transition them. Uh, that oftentimes happens that, uh, things are sold from, emergent grown so above the water line and then um you know if they got a transition so they could just be melting off and um hc aqua says the submerged leaves don't even look like 
uh, four leaf clover anymore. Uh, that's pretty much my experience with the four leaf clover. Uh, with just Myriacella minutia, I believe, is what uh, it's supposed to be, right? Myriacella minutia, right? No, that's not right. I spelled it wrong. Mira, see you. Minutia. Right? No. I got that wrong. I don't know. I can't spell it right. Let's see. Hold on. Let me try this. There. Okay. We got it here. Hold on. I'm getting it figured out. I spelled it completely wrong. Oh, it's Miracella. Miracellea. Hirsuta? I thought Minutia was... Hmm. Well, that is... Yeah, I need... I would have to figure out which one you got. Um, so if you know, like, specifically which type you have, some are only really supposed to ever be emergent grown, so they won't last forever. Um... Some of the plants they have here are on the Google search are labeled wrong. Um, because this one's confusing. Uh, there's Marsalea right here. <sighs> yeah, it's a pretty darn confusing plant, and oftentimes really identified wrong. So I'd have to get, okay, let me, let me get this a little bit better. Get some action shots of this plant and how it's dying. And I can get you some kind of direction from there. Let's try that. And then we can figure it out. Yeah. So there's Dan Marsalea. I always say it wrong. Uh, that's for sure. At the wet spot. You got it at the wet spot. I, had, I have no idea. It wasn't labeled. They said it was full aquatic for leaf. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's get a picture of it since you have, uh, since you're on the Patreon. You just posted a, a different picture under the Patreon. Let's get a picture and then uh, we'll be ready to either to identify that and then uh, kind of figure out what's going wrong with. Um, We'll figure out what could be going wrong with it. The pictures are really, really helpful trying to figure out what's going on with plants. Uh, Bonsai Binge says, saltwater hot tubs with oysters sounds amazing. It is always amazing. Um, Swamp Tao says, looking forward to the oyster clam farm video. And I live near Taylor Shellfish in Skagit. Yes, Taylor Shellfish is where I'm going to be going. Uh, I have to figure out if I'm going to go up north Taylor Shellfish or down south Taylor Shellfish because I'm really close to the down south one. So it would make sense for me to go to the down south one. Um, and then says, and talk with them about Cedar Key clam farming from my youth. Yes, that would be awesome. Uh, the D. Thomas CG says, Joel hyper-focuses like I do. It's too easy to get started on a topic and then rock it off in another direction. <laughs> I definitely do. Hey, I don't know. Has anybody seen this show where I do that every time? <laughs> oh, that's the story of my life. Yes, for sure. But uh, on the four-leaf leaf clover, it definitely gets uh, it gets confusing on that one. Let's get a picture, and then we can start to, f to figure it out um, from there. Because oftentimes what I've found with the four-leaf clover is that um, there's a whole bunch of plants that grow little four-leafs, and they look kind of like a four-leaf clover, and um, they all sort of have different... Uh, needs and they're all kind of just identified as like four leaf clover and you're like well i need the science name so hopefully we can get a picture and then we can start to figure out well uh backtrack from there and then figure out what it was 
Uh, HC Aqua is asking, anyone else find that Red Root Floater does really well under high light, but not as well in full sun? Yes, I found that out myself when uh, I had some growing outside, and it just got murder power from the sun. It's not supposed to be in direct light outside. It's supposed to be growing like under some canopy a little bit, uh, but it is supposed to get a lot of light. Uh, CS is writing in, my frog bit done took over my tank. What do? Is that what to do to get it to stop or what? I don't know. Uh, if I've tried to keep the frog bit down, one of the things that I've done is um, get two suction cups and a nice kind of fat piece of air line that's like bigger than the air line. You know what I'm saying? It's uh, squishy like that cap off both ends, put a, a suction cup on either one, and then kind of uh, make like a, you know, uh, so like when you go to a, a place where kids swim in a lake, <laughs> whoa, that was crazy, sneezing on the live stream, um, when it, so like when kids go swimming at a lake and they have that floating buoy thing that's out there that's like, don't swim past this point, I would, um, set one of those from the corner of the tank, and then I would keep those back there, and then anything that was outside of the buoyed area, I'd net out with a net and send it somewhere. Uh, one of the best things that I've found to do is stuff like duckweed, duckweed specifically, maybe not frog bit, uh, but duckweed specifically is grinded up into fish food. At the very least, I will feed it to my chickens because they love the greenery. You know, with the frog bit, I normally feed to my chickens, so um, I've never looked into using it as shrimp food or fish food or anything like that, so uh, I definitely have to look into that before I did it. But with duckweed, that is perfect. That is perfect shrimp food once you grind it up, uh, dry it out, and just make your own little, little uh, sort of uh, algae flakes or whatever you want to call them. Let's see... No flowers on it. Okay. Uh, Mason French has got a dash. I'll watch the rest later and keep up the good work. Oh, thank you. I think I missed uh, I missed two super chats here. I'm very sorry, you guys. Uh, Mellow Moogle with a $5 super chat saying, Hey, Joel, you forgot to answer Savannah's question. Uh, hopefully I got that covered uh, by this point. There's been so many super chats this show. I don't even know what to do with myself. Uh, Dango Bicon. Hopefully I said that right. That's a hard name. That's a hard name. With the 199 pound uh, super chat saying, great content. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for uh, contributing and kicking in. I much appreciate it. Like I said, it goes back into making more shows and stuff. So that's what we got going on here. Uh, HD Aqua says, uh, the Aqua Llama, I think you have us all stumped on that one. That's right. So I, that's why I was saying just, uh, let's get some pictures in, uh, cause we could check those out on the Patreon. Uh, and you guys can jam boogie over there whenever she gets those posted and we can all take a look at it. We can all, uh, chip in, throw a comment on there and then, um, you know, figure out which direction it's going because that. This kind of stuff does happen uh, from time to time where stores may or may not get confused about what plant they got in and they're like, yeah, here you go. And it gets passed on or uh, it just could have some kind of deficiency that's a little bit difficult to identify uh, from just an explanation. Whereas this is one of those times where a picture is worth a thousand words. You know what I'm saying? Um, CS is ask, uh, says, thanks y'all. Do you have an episode on keeping chickens? Uh, yeah, I've got a bunch of chicken episodes, of just chicken nonsense. It's all thrown in here. It's all thrown in. Um, I think this is video. What is this? Let me see here. How many videos are we at now on the YouTube used tubes tubes? Uh, how many? Where's that? thing at oh here it is i gotta go over to this button click the button and 709 videos whoa uh i have 709 videos uploaded to youtube so yeah there are chickens uh there are some um chicken focused videos coming out you can always go to my better halves channel where 
We relocated some chickens. Uh, that's my weekend life is Vicky's channel. There's only one video on there, and it's about chickens, so that will be pretty easy for you to suss out. <laughs> Let's see here. We got a six ninety nine super chat from Mr. B's Fishing Things. Whoa. Going big time, Mr. B. Uh, for looking something up on the internet and being able to tell us it is wrong that's awesome i'm impressed go flannel oceaneers nose whistler am i nose whistling today you guys i'm sorry i'm sorry if i have the nose whistle i might just a little bit sorry i'm very sorry about that sorry guys <laughs> uh, Betsy Cummins says 670 well this is episode 670 I don't even know so basically I started numbering these at one point in time just so I could start keeping track of what was going on uh, but there are more videos that aren't episodes now so um, there's like 40 more videos now that are just plain old videos so they don't have a number on them but uh, yeah so it's like 709 is what the YouTube says. Who knows if they're being legit or not at this point because, you know, Skynet. Skynet's all pissed. You know, maybe maybe we didn't get enough likes today and now Skynet's mad. I don't know. Silly robots. Um, let's see here. We only got three minutes left. We'll get down to the, uh, the nitty gritty here. Um, you guys throw in your last questions and comments and stuff for the day. And I'm going to say thanks to, oh, I'm going to run through the super chats again. Cause this was wild. You guys, thank you very much. Uh, aquarium co-op guppy guru aquarium co-op Barbara Jackson, the aquarium co-op again, uh, Lisa Jobes, Daryl Dimer, Ashley Taylor. That's like one of the first times I've seen Ashley Taylor on here. Thank you very much. The Zombie Drummer. Thank you very much, man. Throwing it down. Caroline Epler throwing it down. Tim Lewis. Awesome. Aquarium Coop again. To Kevin Keener. Going huge into the red super chat today. Uh, Chansky85. KG Cichlids going big. Guppy Guru going big. Eric Adams. Whoa going wild aquarium coop going with the crazy backwards pie number or something i'm not sure um the zombie drummer uh the aquarium coop got to try to top the donations for caleb much appreciated you guys it's awesome to see the gofundme going up during the show this is amazing thank you you guys i appreciate it uh, BC Fish Room, Daryl Dimer again, Mr. B's Fishing Things, awesome, The Fish Nerd, M. Howie 9, Sarah Konopko, Kyle Paith, Chicken Lips 2, Dango Bicon, hopefully I said that right, Mr. B's Fishing Things again, and Mellow Moogle, all super chatting today. Let me bust over to the regular chat. That's big time, you guys. Thank you very much. I'd super appreciate it. Mello Moogle posted Vicky's uh, channel in there in case you guys want to see a chicken video that we had going from uh, sort of a charity uh, donation of chickens that we uh, took out to a local family that needed some chickens. Um, everyone's saying, have a great night. See you later. Uh, Lumpy Dog says, Joel bites the hand that feeds him. <laughs> YouTube dunks half of his subs. <laughs> well, thanks, Lumpy Dog. Hopefully, it'll be all right. Uh, uh, the D. Thomas CG finishing it out with the big $2 super chat saying, finishing week. Uh, sorry, only so much in the jar. Hey, thank you very much, you guys. Those even the two dollar super chats, man. That's it's crazy. It's crazy generous. It's crazy. It's thank you, thank you very much. I certainly wildly appreciate all of the awesome stuff that's happening and everything going well. And hopefully, we'll just keep the awesome stuff rolling. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean, you know to just keep super chatting but no we're just going to keep the shows rolling we're going to keep the um 
the momentum going and we're going to keep making like videos and trying to help you guys out with stuff you know what i mean so uh we'll try to keep it going um bonsai binge finishing week together with the two dollar super chat ah thank you i was trying to get some questions here at the end you guys uh mellow moogle saying if you have questions for the friday q a show please post them to the patreon community page or email me at joel at darkstararts.com it's a great place to uh, send me an email and get those things in there like i said um the borg aquatics was sending me his chicken update and uh, i got an email from charlie list thank you very much charlie wherever you're at uh super awesome uh email from you thank you very much big time props uh do 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 All right, coming up on the end of the show, I want to tell everybody to have a fantastic night out there. Uh, we will see you Friday at 3 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Uh, hit the subscribe and the notification thing because uh, my videos come out hot and fresh whenever they come out. And if you want to get a notification, you got to have that notification thing clicked or whatever, and then you'll get it, and then you'll be like, cool, and then you can watch it, and then you'll be like, oh, cool, man, I learned nothing today. But maybe you'd accidentally learn something. Who knows? All right. Don't light up on any fireworks in the middle of the night. Later.